Greetings traders and welcome back to another In Depth with Chris episode. In today's discussion, we will be covering the Money Flow Index. It sounds wonderful because, hey, it sounds like money is just flowing from a stream. It's a little bit more complicated than that, but it is an indicator that is quite fun to use. And as such, we will be going into all of the details about how it works, where it comes from, and how it can potentially be used as a strategy to find signals. Now, before we get going any further, let's show you how you can apply it to your charts on the Finamark platform. That way you can follow along the entire time. In order to do so, we're going to click the top center show indicators options button, and then we're going to add a new section. It is not a, an indicator that overlays price directly, so we've got to add a new section. And after we do that, when we scroll down to the M's, we will see that there is a money flow index. If we give that a click, go back to our charts, we'll see that the money flow index has been added. I am just simply stretching it down a little bit lower so it takes up less of the screen, and that is all there is to it. So without further ado, Let's dive on into that material, but please click that like and subscribe button down below if you haven't already. So let's dive on into that material and keep on going. There are all types of trading indicators out there today for traders to choose from to help them with their technical analysis to better predict market movement. The Money Flow Index has to be one of the coolest named indicators that falls into one of the most widely used indicator groups out there. That group is the oscillators category. Everybody has heard of the RSI, but not many traders are aware or use the Money Flow Index, not due to any problems with the Money Flow Index, but instead due to the lack of knowledge about it or how to use it. The Money Flow Index is indeed an oscillator that is used by technical traders to identify overbought and oversold scenarios. The MFI for short is also applied by traders to help spot divergences, trend reversals, and failure swings. The indicator takes into account both price and volume information, which is what makes it different from the majority of the other oscillators out there, such as the Relative Strength Index, which incorporates just price data. Analysts refer to the MFI as a volume-weighted RSI as a way of describing it. The Money Flow Index is based on the idea that the volume alone isn't indicative of the market's overall state. Instead, investors should look at the market's response to price changes. The combination of volume and price gives a better representation of the dominant market sentiment. The MFI is measured in values between 0 and 100, and then is plotted as a line that oscillates between these two values. A rise in the MFI indicates an increased buying pressure, while a drop in the index value itself is a sign of growing selling pressure. As the name suggests, the Money Flow Index represents the inflow and outflow of money into a particular asset over a certain period of time. The instrument measures buying and selling pressure by analyzing price and volume data. When the MFI indicates buying pressure, technical traders talk about positive money flow. On the other hand, if the indicator signals selling pressure, the situation is considered to have an inflow of negative money. The positive and negative money flows are combined to create a money flow ratio, the money ratio. It is used to calculate the value of the money flow index. The value of the MFI is then plotted on a line, which is why it is considered an oscillator because it then fluctuates back and forth. We can think of the money flow index as something that is used to help traders better identify the enthusiasm in the market or to provide an exact representation of the sentiment that dominates the particular asset class in any given moment. Simply put, the MFI is used to find out how and how much of a given instrument was traded. It is convenient for traders as it paints the buying and selling pressure as a simple numerical value that is easy and quick to comprehend and understand. But how can this positive negative money flow thing help us while trading? Well, the money flow's primary use is to help traders spot upcoming changes in the price trend. These can be reversals, divergences, failure swings, the list goes on and on. By getting an exact representation of the price and volume data about a particular security, traders can better plan their further moves. For example, if the MFI signals an increasing selling pressure, the trader can consider going short to protect his portfolio from potentially losing value. On the other hand, a building up of buying pressure can help us better time the market to capitalize on the uprising that is to come. 
Let's take a moment to talk about the calculation process behind the MFI. That way we actually understand where the information is coming from instead of just simply blindly following it. We'll start off with the formula itself. And this is the calculation. And if you're interested in copying this down, I would just recommend pausing the video, taking a picture, or just writing it down yourself. The money flow index is going to be equal to 100 minus 100 over 1 plus the money flow ratio. The money flow ratio is going to be equal to 4 14 days positive money flow over the 14 days negative money flow. Then we have the raw money flow, which is going to be equal to the typical price times the volume. And then finally, we have the typical price, which is going to be the high plus low plus close all over three. So it might seem complicated at first, but the good news is, remember, this is an indicator where it is doing this math for you. So don't feel like you're going to have to do this on a daily basis. But to better understand how to calculate the MFI, let's just go through the step by step process. The first step would be to start by calculating the typical price, which is down here at the bottom, for each of the last 14 periods. For each period, we would mark whether the price has gone up or down. That way, we can tell whether the raw money flow is positive or negative. Then we would calculate the raw money flow. After this, we would then add up all positive money flows for the last 14 periods and divide them by the negative ones to calculate the money flow ratio. Then finally, we would calculate the MFI using this formula. And once we do this, we then use the last 14 periods as a basis for our calculations going forward. So once again, this is how it's done, this is how it's calculated, and this is where it comes from. But in all reality, you'll probably never actually have to do this math yourself. Similar to all leading indicators, the MFI helps traders to predict expected market movements a little bit better. To do that, it focuses on identifying two main scenarios, overbought and oversold scenarios. Overbought and oversold markets are identified through the value of the MFI as it is measured on that scale that we talked about from zero to 100. Depending on where the MFI stands, the trader can get a sense of whether the particular market is overbought, oversold, or in the neutral zone. That way, he or she can discover possible trading opportunities to capitalize on. Usually, when the MFI is trading above 80, this indicates an overbought scenario, while a value below 20 signals an oversold scenario. With the overbought scenarios, the general idea is that if the MFI is above 80, it's overbought because it's not common for the MFI to go all the way up to 100. Even moves above 90 are relatively rare in today's markets. However, if the MFI does go above the 90 mark, then the signal is generally considered to be pretty strong. When the MFI ranges in the zone between the 80 and 90 area, preferably falling from 90 to 80 going in that direction, traders consider an overbought market that is usually getting ready for a correction. Overbought situations arise when the momentum and the price increase at a relatively fast rate and surpass that 80 mark and the market is just unable to keep up. Or in other words, when the price reaches a high point just relatively quickly. When analyzing signals from the MFI, it is also essential to keep an eye on price action of the chart itself. It's always helpful to make sure that we're coupling our reads with the indicator with the actual movements of price. Price. The oversold scenario occurs when the MFI drops below 20. And just like we talked about with the MFI rising above 80 but not commonly rising to 100, that holds true with the MFI not commonly reaching zero. When the money flow index moves from 10 to 20 in that direction, traders usually consider this an oversold market that is getting ready for a correction and could be due for some buying thereafter. A situation where the MFI climbs towards the 20 mark while the price of the instrument continues to de decrease indicates an upcoming price reversal usually. But once again, it is always helpful to make sure that we're coupling price action with the reads that we're getting from the indicator. So taking a look at the chart, we can see a couple scenarios where the market was both overbought as well as oversold. Here we had a scenario where the market was overbought, which followed with a price correction shortly thereafter. Down here where the market was quite low on the MFI, almost right around that 20 mark, we found that the market was a little oversold and as such, we found a nice bullish move thereafter. These are just brief examples of when the MFI is overbought or oversold. And also it helps prove why we should always pay attention 
attention to price action. On the right hand side of the screen when we saw the MFI above the 80 mark, indicating a potentially overbought scenario, the price action didn't agree. There's not a whole lot of bearish price action occurring during this phase, instead we have grindy bullish activity, and as such it probably wouldn't be a good idea or logical to expect the market to be falling at this point. So in this scenario, the MFI is just indicating a further continuance of the bullish trend. Traders also use the money flow index to identify divergences to generate trade signals as well. The money flow index going one direction while price itself is going another direction is essentially what we're talking about when we use the word divergence. And of course there's going to be a bullish divergence where the outcome is expected to be bullish and then there's going to be a bearish divergence where the outcome is expected to be bearish. On the chart here we actually have an example of a bearish divergence. This is done when price is actually rising. The literal price is rising, the highs are getting higher, but the money flow index highs are actually getting lower, as you can see down here at the same time. This is an indication that something has to give, and generally we expect the something to give to be price. We usually expect price to begin following the direction of the money flow index. So in this case, we would use price action to identify a proper point to jump into the market and use the confirmation of bearish momentum to come to generate a sell signal because of the divergence. If we were to imagine the scenario the other way around, there is also the bullish divergence, which quite literally is just the mirror opposite. Instead of the MFI going down, we would have the MFI rising while price itself is falling. And if price is falling while the MFI is rising, then we have a bullish divergence because we are expecting price to be rising thereafter. Similar to divergences, failure swings are another way that traders use the MFI to generate trade signals. Failure swings can also lead to a price reversal just like the divergence. There are two types of failure swings, just like the divergence, we have the bullish and bearish variation. The common denominator between both is that they unfold in quite a similar way. With a bullish failure swing, the money flow indicator is to drop below 20 as we have here in this box. This indicates the market is oversold. The MFI recovers and then bounces back to surpass the 20 mark. The MFI then drops a bit but remains above the 20 mark as we have going on within this box on that little blue line bouncing back and forth. The MFI then breaks above the previous high which occurred right here where I drew my little plus sign. This is an indication of a failure swing where we might potentially be looking to go long and had we gone long at this location we can see that we did get a nice bullish outcome thereafter. The bearish MFI failure swing is just simply going to be the exact opposite. The money flow indicator needs to surpass the 80 mark which indicates an overbought market. Then the MFI needs to fall back below the 80 mark and then it needs to pull back towards the 80 mark but fail again setting a new low in relation to the first pivot point that it created and at the moment that the market is now falling back and breaking the new low this is usually an indication where we would want to look in for a sell. Because of the popularity of the RSI, which is known as the Relative Strength Index, I thought it was important to compare the Money Flow Index to the Relative Strength Index to put a better relative understanding of the Money Flow Index when it stacks up. Similar to the MFI, the RSI is also used to chart chart strength and weaknesses in price movements. It is based on the closing price for the recent period and generates overbought and oversold signals to help the traders find its opportunities. So we can think the RSI as this gorilla over here here on the left. However, this is really where the similarities between the both indicators end, because the difference between the MFI and the RSI, which we'll consider this guy here on the right, is that the latter doesn't consider volume data. data. The, the RSI doesn't take into consideration that volume data, which means both indicators look at different things. Accumulated during this observed period, the MFI looks at volume where the RSI is looking at price changes. This is why many refer to the MFI as a volume weighted RSI, which basically means the MFI is the more complete indicator, although the RSI is the more popular one for no real logical reason aside from the fact that it is just simply more popular. At the end of all of it, both of these indicators can be used quite comfortably by the trader because ultimately the success is going to be dictated by the trader using it.
The Money Flow Index is a very fun tool to use, and despite being similar to the RSI, it has a very unique feel about it. If you enjoy using oscillators, I strongly encourage you apply the Money Flow Index to a demo account so you can play around with it with no risk and see how you enjoy it or see how it pairs with your personal trading strategy. But until next time, folks, thank you for joining me as always. Please click the like and subscribe button down below if you haven't, and I will catch you in the next one. Cheers, folks. Bzzz.